Today I want to talk to you about troubleshooting. Um, this is the definition from Wikipedia and you can see troubleshooting is a form of problem solving and uh, it's a logical systematic search for the source of a problem. Uh, we also get into half splitting so I'm going to give you a demonstration of that on uh, lab number four. Lab number four is a good lab to start talking about troubleshooting because now we're combining logic gates and we don't really know where in our circuit the problem might be. So we're going to use uh, lab number four, part A. Uh, you can see where you're going to use three gates and we're using two ICs and there's going to be some problems with our circuit that we need to uh, figure out. So I'm going to go through the systematic approach to finding these problems. Uh, the first step is to know that the output is AB or BC and you need a truth table so that you know which combinations are supposed to output a logic one. If you don't know what the output's going to be you can't even start troubleshooting. So this is the setup for uh, lab number four part A and it was in our lab number four video and today we're going to do some troubleshooting on the circuit so I've introduced a few problems here that you might have. Looking at it, you can see the dip switch, the uh, 7408, the 7432. Everything looks wired up exactly as it was in the previous lab. But I've introduced a few problems that a student might make. Obviously, the wiring has to go to the correct hole. If you don't know what the correct hole is, right you have to look at the schematic and check the pin numbers it's very important you get these pin numbers right a lot of people have tried to wire up uh, a gate like the 7402 the uh, NOR gate and the outputs on pin 1 instead of pin 3 so it's very important you know these pin numbers before you start so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my battery pack and I'm looking at my inputs so if I move my inputs to a logic one and a logic one, okay, so A and B are one, the output should be one, but the light's not on. What went wrong? Where do I start troubleshooting? Well, I've always mentioned that on this side here, I've always got a power light hooked up and you'll notice that the power light is not on. So this indicates to me that the problem is not with my circuit but is with my power supply. So the first thing I'm going to check with my power supply is the connection of these two wires. So I'm using a battery pack and I want to make sure that the wires are connected correctly before I take the battery pack apart and start checking the individual batteries. So I'm going to give it a little tug on the black wire and it seems like it's connected well. I'm going to give a little tug on my red wire Oh, and it came out. I want you to notice that when you get these battery packs the wire isn't stripped back very far. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is strip the wire back further on my battery pack. So here I've stripped the wire further back on my battery wire you can see now that it's going to go right through my red terminal. So when placing these wires in the terminals, you'll notice the wire for the battery pack is actually a smaller diameter than the wire for the uh, diode. So you want to get it into the hole in the binding post and you want it to get right the way through. So you want to get your wire into the center hole and ideally you want it to get it to cross the wire coming from the diode so that when you tighten this up it makes a good tight connection and doesn't pull out. You also want to make sure that you can see a little bit of the wire showing. Right so when as I pull this back here you can see that the insulation is just back a little bit from the terminal. You need good metal on metal connection for electricity to flow. So 
So what I have here on my breadboard is the detecting logic 0, detecting logic 1 circuit from my first lab. And I'm going to use a long yellow wire as my logic probe. And I want to find out what the output of this AND gate is. So the AND gate comes out and goes into pin 1 of my OR gate. So I'm looking at that and I can see that the red LED is on and it's really bright. The green LED is off. So from the AND gate I'm getting a logic 1. If I turn off the switch is going into my AND gate I can see that I get a logic 0. If I turn on the switches, I get a logic 1. So a logic 1 is coming out of the AND gate, going into the OR gate. But I'm not getting a logic 1 out of the OR gate. So I'm going to check and see what logic I am getting out of my OR gate. And both LEDs are on, indicating there's no logic. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and check and see if I do have power and ground going to my IC. So I'm going to use my logic probe to uh, check and see what's happening. I'm going to check the uh, ground bus. And you can see that the green light is on bright. I'm going to check the ground going to my IC and you can see it's not bright like it was before. So I'm going to check this little ground wire here and it didn't look like it was in all the way. And You can see that it hasn't been stripped back very far. So I'm going to put in a good ground wire. Now checking the ground, see that the logic 0 light is on, the logic 1 light is off, so now I've got a good ground in there. The next thing I want to do is check and make sure that the ground is indeed getting to the ground pin. So I take the wire out, Touching the wire to the ground pin, I can see the logic low is lit up. Now I'm going to check the power pin. So I'm going to check the power is coming into the bus. I can see it's getting there. Now I'm going to check right on the pin and see if power is getting to the pin. So I'm touching the wire to the power pin and I can see that it's not actually getting power. When I put it in the bus the red light comes on bright. When I touch the leg the red light does not come on bright. So prying the IC off the breadboard. So having taken the IC off the breadboard I can see that the pin is actually missing. And if I rotate the IC, you can see that the pin is bent up underneath the IC. So you need to gently pry that pin back up again. Okay, so you can see I've tried to straighten the pin up. The pin is always going to be a little bit weak there, so make sure that you're very gentle when you press this back into your breadboard. Okay, so using the logic probe, now I can check that pin and see that yes indeed power is getting to the pin. And I can also see that now my output LED is lit up indicating a logic 1. So checking my dip switches again, there's the LED off. And when I put 1, one into the AND gate. The output of the AND gate is a logic one going into my OR gate and the output of my OR gate is a logic one now lighting up my LED.
This gives you an example of the steps necessary to go through to do troubleshooting. Every lab that you come to, we teach you how to wire up a circuit correctly. It's just a matter of using what you've already learned to correct the problems that you've created when you wired up your circuit. There's one more thing I'd like to mention about troubleshooting. I've got a uh, voltmeter here. Uh, I think I got it from Princess Auto or Canadian Tire. Uh, you'll notice that the output coming from my battery pack comes to the uh, red and black terminal on the uh, little trainer board I have set up here and you'll notice I'm reading 5.62 volts coming straight from the battery pack. Now I've been using this battery for a few demonstrations now so I'm starting to run out of uh, power in my battery pack so it's dropped down from about 6.2 to uh, 5.62 volts and it's going through those two diodes so if I take a look at the voltage going to the bus so the ground bus and the power bus uh, my voltage is down to 4.18 volts uh, my circuit seems to be operating correctly but this could become a problem later on I have here a data sheet for the uh, 74LS08 uh, this one was manufactured by Fairchild. Uh, you can see they give you the uh, pinouts for it. But on the second page, they give you uh, the electrical characteristics for the IC. So these are the recommended operating conditions, and you can see we've got absolute maximum ratings here. Uh, we've got two columns. Uh, basically this is for the 5408 and this is for the 7408. So we're using the 7408. And you can see in here we have high level input voltage. That's the 2 volts. The low level input voltage. That's the 0.8 volts. But you'll notice the supply voltage. A nominal is 5 volts which is the 5 volts we're normally using maximum 5.25 volts and the minimum is 4.75 volts so if your voltage drops below the 4.75 volts it's not guaranteed to operate and this actually becomes a major issue for us when we get into using the uh, timing circuits and the uh, counter circuits we build a lot of times the students will put 5 volts into their uh, onto their breadboard and they'll go through the uh, two uh, diodes and they'll drop it down below 4 volts and your circuit won't operate. So it's uh, very important to make sure that you are within this voltage range, the 4.75 to the 5.25 volts, otherwise your circuit may not operate correctly. The LEDs will come on, but uh, sometimes some of the gates don't fire correctly, especially when we get into uh, JK flip-flops and that, those kind of circuits. So please make sure your voltage is between 4.75 and 5.25, uh, and that'll take care of a lot of your intermittent problems that uh, show up in timer circuits. Mm -hmm.